Welcome to Malkai TV News. It's 6.30 p.m. I am Fatima Yakub. The headlines. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority directs foreign airlines not to delay Nigerian travelers boarding Army's COVID-19 PCR. Gunmen attack Kaba prison, set inmates free. And Kogi traders and consumers lament over the high cost of food items. Now, the main stories. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, has issued a circular to all foreign airlines operating into Nigeria not to henceforth deny Nigerian travelers burden for their inability to show evidence of payment for the day 7 COVID-19 PCR test or generate paid QR code. The challenges surrounding the generation of the PCR code after payment of the statutory fees had led many travelers from Nigeria and into Nigeria to be denied boarding by foreign airlines. Director General of NCAA, Captain Mosunuhu, attributed the circular to the challenges confronting some Nigerian travelers while trying to fill their health and travel history into Nigeria's international travel portal, NITP. The circular dated September 11, 2021, entitled Permission for Airlines to Board Passengers Traveling to Nigeria Who Are Unable to Show Evidence of Payment for the 7 COVID-19 PCR Test or Generate Paid QR Code Permit to Fly and signed by the NCAA DG declared that the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 had been informed of the challenges some Nigerian travelers face while filling the health and travel history into NITP. Where the circular airlines are now mandated to board any traveler to Nigeria who finds it difficult to either pay for the repeat day 7 COVID-19 PCR test or generate paid QR code permit to fly. The NCEA DG explained that passengers now have the option of making payment for the repeat day 7 COVID-19 at the destination airport in Nigeria. The circular partly stated Holders of diplomatic passport and children aged 10 years and below who are unable to complete the NITP are to be allowed to board the flight. Their health declaration and travel history will be captured by the Port Health Service, BHS, at the destination airport. Hundreds of prisoners have escaped from the Medium Federal Correctional Center in Kababunu, local government area of Kogi State. The Assistant Inspector General of Police, Zone 8, Ayuba Ede, confirmed the jailbreak. He said that the State Commissioner of Police and other head of security agencies have swung into action to do an assessment of the cause of the break. It was gathered that the gunmen in their tents attacked the prison center, which is on the Kabalokoja Highway on Sunday night through Monday morning, killing the military men keeping guard on the road before attacking the center. They thereafter launched an attack on the prison officers before making ways to set all the prisoners free. Kogi State residents have called on the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC, to restore faulty transformer and provide adequate power supply. The people caught across Zango and Lokoja Metropolis also lament over the recent increase in tariff. A reporter, Ify Thompson, also went round to observe the situation. She has this to say. We are in the streets of Zango. We are here to capture the plights of residents as to the vandalizations of the transformer. Residents in Zango complain of lack of power supply due to vandalization of transformer by hoodlums for the past two months. Business owners said that the power outage has caused a lot of setback in their businesses as they have to fuel their generator to render services to consumers. I repair radio, all those things, and I don't have light in my shop now, almost how many days, and I'm paying for bill. Almost every month I paid, and we are not enjoying light here, so they should just try to do something about it for us, please. This is the center of business, and the other part of Zango who are still having light on kind of daily basis is inside. They don't have... There are not much business going on there, so it has, it's, it's really affecting business. Some people are even closing, closing their shops, like there is a weather shop at this roadside here. He can't work again. More than two or three months now, we have no lights. And if you look at what I'm selling, I can't do without lights. I use 1,500 now to buy fuel every day, calculate by 30 days. It's not funny. Residents are calling on the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, 
AEDC and the government of Kogi State to help restore their transformer. What we are paying is more than what uh, we expected, what they are giving us as bill. People that don't have, people that have more light pay less bill, but we are paying more, yet no light. We bought a transformer with our money, which is, after we bought the money, uh, the transformer, transformer has a problem. And never, never come down there to make sure that they are coming to get money and it's their own business. And the transformer has a problem, NEPA cannot be able to come down and repair it. And we plead to them to come. They will be giving, giving us today, tomorrow. At the end of the day, almost two months, all getting to three months now, we are in blackout. NEPA, they are teaching us. They are teaching us too much. And nobody can come out and tell them, tell them it's not like that. And they said it's a company. If it is government, we say that it's our own property, but it's somebody else selling something for us and uh, we buy something for their hand and we are still paying for them. It's unfair. It's... On tariff, consumers appeal to the AEDC to reduce their billing system. On the street of Paparanda Square, residents also lament on the poor power supply which has caused damages to their electrical appliances and that is also risky to human life. Still, AEDC workers always come around to disconnect power supply cables of residents for not paying their bills. They, however, advise the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company to restore adequate power supply that encourages them to pay their bills regularly. Ify Thompson, reporting for MLC TV. Traders and consumers at the popular international market local giant a cross-session of interview have lamented over the high cost of consumables and unconsumable items. They said farmers are no longer free to go to their farms and travelers are afraid to transport their goods and farm produce across the state due to regular attack by bandits on the roads and the farms. The traders said the fear has created food scarcity across the nation. They called on the federal government to put necessary measures in place to tackle insecurity in the country. A reporter, Faith Abdul Ghaffar, who went around the market, has more. Complaints by some traders and customers in the market on the high cost of consumable and unconsumable items are alarming. Still, the market was full to its capacity. Buyers and sellers we are seen happily negotiating with one another. Some traders said, it's because of attack on farmers, while some lament over what they describe as an unbearable situation. Village women will not, they told me that uh, it's because of those Fulani yes, men that they used to attack them in the farm, and uh, the other way around, at times they would just, the cows will enter their farm, they will feed on the cassava, or the Fulani men will even uproot the cassava stem for them to eat. So that's why even if they go to the farm, at times of them to have much to bring out. They don't bring out little. Or they will not pay security men that we accompany them to the farm in order for them not to be attacked. That's why the price of Gary refused to drop. You don't know why the price is going high again. No? And we didn't say hungry now. We don't know what we will do. And it's supposed to come down. And you know come down, it's still the high, more more. People who buy will know they sell well, well again, like before. Anytime the one will go buy something, woman will not know. Personally, any aftermarket, they increase, they increase to 500 or 200 or another that in day. They further called on the federal and state government to introduce a market price control policy to checkmate traders who drive joy in increasing the cost of products and produce in the markets. We are free to the government to help us, to help us to talk to those people, that to increase some things so that everything will reduce for us. Because we are going to the same market, and the salary is not the same, uh, Abina. so we are buying the same thing, so that to help us and reduce this uh, high price of things. I think they surprise I beg more than help us. May the thing go down, I beg. The good news is, despite the increase in the cost of other items, a bag of paddle rice, according to a seller, is gradually declining. But now the rice don't come down now. We are buying the bag, we are never made with 13,000. But now we are selling the rubber now, 38, 36, 37. We are selling the rice now. 
but foodstuffs like beans, gari, oil, spaghetti, even eggs have continued to rise in the cost of buying from marketers. Faith Abdugafal reporting for MFC TV. Buyers and sellers in Mami Market appeal to the government for stable price control. The buyers and sellers in Mami Market have appealed to government to checkmate the increase in the price of goods and perishable commodities in the market. The market, which is located at the Otokiti housing estate of Lokojo, was flooded with sellers who wanted to sell their goods to the public. Jane Balabobo has the report. Recently across the nation, Nigeria, traders and consumers have lamented over the hike in price of goods and commodities in the markets. However, Mami Market in Kogi State, the story is not different as one of the market's women, Halimat Yusuf, has expressed her displeasure on the increase in the prices of goods and perishable commodities. Mm. Like this size nice on my table now is one set. Mm. And this size before we used to sell it seven on any. Okay. As the price go up now, mm. meanwhile they sell us again or they food. Okay. Because the time where this market they cheap. People they buy. If People they wash and they buy. If you buy a bag, hundred crate. Mm. At all, at all, you will still gain like ten thousand euros. But now, for you to even gain even four thousand euros by now by the special grace of God. Okay. Sometimes we said the market said your money will not come come out top less of the gate. As it took out, plenty of people know they chop air. Chop air again. Mm. The four four feet bag is two five now. She said that the profit she makes on her egg business has now dropped drastically and it is from the business she feeds her family. A gari seller, Mary Uzo, spoke about the high cost of buying, while Grace Halims seems to be benefiting from the present change in price. No, the price is low okay, because the thing is affecting me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, what about now? Twenty-four thousand. Ah. So how much you sell this bucket? By then we get three hundred, four hundred, but now we are selling just nine hundred. Ah. And customers are complaining. They are complaining. They and they and they this is actually affecting your business. Yes. Yeah. Before I get three bags, but now I hardly sell one and a half bag. Before, at least customers buy four bags and be happy. But now, there is no money. No money. Yeah. 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 That means customer that they complain, but okay. The price before and the price now, which one you think say better? As he go up, you like her like that. Yeah. Another buyer, Suleiman Aishat, also lamented over the sudden increase in the purchase of palm oil. Oh, palm oil before is 100 naira. Okay. Now, the cup is 200 naira. Beans? Okay. Beans is 500 naira, and now beans is 1,000 naira. What about rice? And rice is uh, 400 naira, and uh, now rice is 1,000 naira, 800 naira. So we are not happy about it. The government should help us about uh, agriculture and let something. Calm down. I want to advise the government to help us with the poor. Because with the poor, we have no money to be buying all those things. Please, mm -hmm. the government should do something about it. Let everything calm down. We the poor should enjoy our life. They appeal to the government to come to their aid by regulating the market price control of perishable commodities across the states. Janet G. Balagubu reporting for MLC TV. Social media negative impact on kids. Parents have classified social media as the most negative impact on kids if not properly guided. Ibrahim Rabiat, Modupe urged parents and guardians to keep a close eye on their children and words to avoid them indulging in the global social media menace. As a parent, as a mother, our children need a lot of guidance for us. We have to guide them on the way of life positively so that uh, social media negative side will not have impact on them. Others said that the advent of social media has made life easy and simple but the negative side of it cannot be emphasized. I think the advent of social media has added color to the activities of humans on earth. I also think the advent of the the advent of social media has also eased a lot of things communication 
You can imagine that in those days, when you want to send a letter to somebody, you go to the post office, you do a lot of things. Now, with the use of social media, you can just like do your WhatsApp, text your message, and the person gets this instantly. You can interact with somebody aside the phones that we use, the telephones that we use, uh, the voice calls you make, and the rest of them. So, uh, social media has actually uh, helped uh, the society in a great way. But you should also understand that uh, for everything that has advantage, there are disadvantages. For me, I don't want to dwell on the disadvantages of social media because the advantages are so enormous that when I start thinking of them, sometimes I will be uh, somehow pushed to begin to like think less about the disadvantages. It has more of advantage to disadvantage because okay this is it helps in grooming businesses you don't have to start moving around especially those that does not have shops because in nigeria things are expensive right now and the rent of shops are, are so unacceptable in the country so you can do your businesses online they encourage parents and guidance to always monitor the activities of their children, even when allowed to operate on social media platforms, so as to refrain from indulging in negative aspect of it. Establishment of Technology Village Nasarawa State Government signed MOU on Joint Ventures Agreement with ABS Blueprints Limited for the development of Nasarawa Technology Village in Asopada Karu at Government House, Lafia, today. In a dynamic, fast-changing, technology-driven world, the Nasarawa State Government has today joined other developing nations as it signed for development and practice the culture of invention and innovation through technology in its state. The governor, who understands two essential things needed to foster new economic growth, social stability, productivity, and efficient and effective service delivery to his people, charged ABS Blueprints Limited to be timely in the project delivery. The euphoria that greeted the signing of the MOU for implications of promotion and exceeding expectations of his mantra reaffirmed him as a people-oriented and technology-driven government who, in many estimations, it is crystal clear. The Jinyadula Isule government has good intentions for the development of the state through technology. You're still watching MLC TV News. We'll be right back. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. The journey to buy a condo rice has ended in tears for a 22-year-old Chimbobo. A 22-year-old gardener of Kembe area in Chimbobo district, central province, is stranded in Nakonde. Dixon Liandu has told Cheta FM News that he came to buy rice three days ago after hearing that the price had gone down, but was attacked by criminals on the night he arrived. He says the criminals took advantage when he asked for directions to a nearby guest house to spend the night before ordering rice. The allegedly took him to a bush where they beat and robbed him of 3,800 Zambian currency and the phone. Mr. Luyando says since the attack, he has been spending nights in different mobile money boots. It was his first time in Nekonde, a city in Zambia. What he needs now is a bus fare from well wishes to return home as hopes of selling Nakonde rice have ended in tears. With rise and high demands, this is a wake-up call to those wishing to travel with no idea of criminality in the border's town. Miyamasuki skips court appearance. 
The first Mayor Masuki leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, was unable to appear at a court hearing on Monday for health reasons. A member of her legal team said describing her conditions as dizziness caused by motion sickness. Suu Kyi, who has been detained on various charges since her overthrow in February 1st military coup, did not have coronavirus but felt ill having not traveled in a vehicle for a long time. Lawyer Min Min So said, The popular Nobel Peace Prize winner has spent about half of the past three decades in various forms of detention over her non-violent struggle against dictatorship and her health is closely watched. It is not serious sickness. She suffered car sickness. She cannot stand that feeling and told us she wanted to take a rest, Min Min So said. She has been accused of accepting big bribes and has been charged with unspecified breaches of the Official Secrets Act in a separate and more serious cases, which is punishable by up to 14 years in jail. Stokey's only communication with the outside world has been through her legal team, which says its access to her is limited and monitored by authorities. She is due to appear in court on Tuesday. In sports, Cristiano Ronaldo strikes diet is already rubbing off on Manchester United's players, according to the club's backup goalkeeper, Lee Grant. Cristiano Ronaldo's longevity at the top level partially attributed to his dietary discipline. Goalkeeper Lee Grant reveals Ronaldo's food choices, already impressing Manchester United team's mate. The 36-year-old made a perfect return to club with two goals against Newcastle. Ahead of Saturday's 4-1 win over Newcastle, where Ronaldo reacquainted himself with the Old Trafford faithful in style with two goals, the club's Friday night meal was an unusual affair for one particular reason. Grant has revealed that on inspecting Ronaldo's plate, none of his Manchester United teammates were particularly keen to take advantage of the area of deserts on offer. Ronaldo's longevity at the top level of sport has partially been credited to his strict diet regime which is said to include fresh fruits, salads, nuts and whole grains, fish, yogurts, quinoa and chicken. Grant added, I'll tell you one of his plates. He had several. One of them was avocado and a couple of boiled eggs. This guy is in incredible shape. In entertainment, Matthias Ayodeji, Peters, have the details. Grammy winning superstars Whiskey and Beyonce won a moment for Best Cinematography at the 2021 MTV Music Video Awards. The award was for the music video for Brown Skin Girl. Wikipedia described the VMAs as an award show presented by the cable channel MTV to honor the best in the music video medium. The award will also go to Nigerian born cinematographer Jane Inkero, who directed the video. Its Cinematography Award is a craft award given to both the artist as well as the cinematographer, director of photography of the music video. In our African news, Nigeria singer and Maven artist Rema announced yet another tour of the United States. Rema will tour Miami, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Brooklyn and New York. It will also perform at the One African Music Fest and Lost in the Reading Fest in October. On the same day, Rema also teases debut album, Raves and Roses. Matthias Ayodeji Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Thanks for watching us. Do join us tomorrow by 6.30 p.m. strictly online. For partnership and sponsorship, visit our social media pages. Our Facebook page is MLC TV, Instagram, MLC TV 2021, YouTube, Melkai TV. I am Fatima Yakub. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our social media handles.